This is One on One. That's pretty awesome. Uh, by the way, that was from the Signature Theater. And Jim Houghton, founding artistic director of the Signature Theater on 42nd Street between 10th and 11th. What an operation you have. Talk about it, Signature Theater. Oh, gosh. It's, uh, it's been a dream, really. It's a, a place where I often talk about the plays are a happy byproduct of what we do. And what we do is really relationships. We are unique in that way, where we create these long-term relationships with writers. We started with this program called Residency One. Residency one. Yeah, and it's one writer for an entire season with the writer in residence the entire time, and they're engaged with the audience and all the, obviously all the artists. Who's there now? Uh, right now, it is Pete Gurney, A.R. Gurney. And yeah, we just had him in. Did you have Pete? We just in? Had Pete. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Naomi Wallace, and oh. we've done amazing. Yeah, that's Pete parts. Gurney, right? We're looking at him on camera right now. Oh, there he is. It's yeah. amazing. Oh, he's incredible. 84 years Naomi. young. Yeah, exactly. That's but, Naomi. Oh, my God. That program we started with, and then we created a program called Residency Five, where we have writers in residence for five years, and we um, we encourage bodies of work there. We nurture them. We commit to three new works from them over the five years. In the Residency One, we always do a new work, and so it's this incredible collection of amazing artists that we develop relationships with. How about the relationship with the audience at twenty-five bucks? Yeah, I mean, you, hold on, twenty-five dollars, <laughs> and you're committed that the price is twenty-five dollars over the next. How yeah, many years? It, the next 20 years. Explain the economics to the, uh, of that, because here at Public Broadcasting, we're trying to figure out the economics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't figure no, out how you pull that off. It's an interesting thing, you know. Um, we wanted to address the idea of access, because, you know, we all talk about wanting to have diverse and a, a wide range of audiences and serving our whole community. Uh, but the only way to do that is by creating an access point for them. So what we did about eight, nine years ago is we started and piloted the program. And we underwrote the tickets, so they're full price. Define that. People hear the word underwriting right. or underwriting, and they're like, hey, what does that mean? So if you buy a ticket there and we charge you $25 for it, you're going to see on the ticket that the ticket's $75, and it's been underwritten by 50 and then you pay the remainder. And so that's to remind Who everybody. Who paid for the 50 Well, the 50 is a collection of folks. Uh, we have a key underwriter right now called the Pershing Square Foundation with Bill and Karen Ackman, who have supported that. And uh, they've, in essence, created a challenge and threw the gauntlet down and put up half the money for that over the next 20 years. Wow. So, so that means you're not that much different than we are in this sense. For those of us in public broadcasting, we often tell people, you know, we don't charge you, right? We're not a subscription. Yeah. But yeah. we're out there raising money all the time to do what we do. Are you out there raising money? Oh, yeah. No, okay. I mean, so that's... I didn't think you were that much different. Right? No, it's a key part. What's interesting about the ticket initiative is that um, for somebody who can afford the full freight and they're sitting there in a $25 ticket price point, they give back. They like the notion of the theater experience being democratized. And so when we go and reach out and ask for help, they're inclined to give back. They want to sort of, sort of pay it forward. And that's been really remarkable to see how... As a, as a sort of strategy to, to engage folks with it, they're really into the notion of this civic idea of making access possible. But your space, you know, I happen to, you know, because I live in New Jersey and yeah. come through the, when I say the yeah. tunnel, there are, there are two, but I come through the Lincoln. Yeah. It's, I mean, you're there. Yeah, I mean, we're you right come there. through, you're right there. Yeah. And it's not, make it clear. What's going on there? Because you've got a lot of things going on. Well, what's fascinating, you know, we're the first new theater arts building of this scale. It's a full city block in almost 50 years. And it was designed, the interior was designed by Frank Geary. Uh, he partnered with us over many years into design and create these spaces. Um, it's, what's it's, there? Well, it's uh, 75,000 square feet. It's this huge scale, but it's all in intimate blocks. We have three theaters. We have a cafe, a bookstore. Um, Isn't there a bar? You know, bar and yeah. yeah, yeah. Every theater should have a bar, uh, <laughs> you know. And uh, what's interesting for us is that we made the front door the stage door. So we want everyone who uh, occupies that building, whether it's artists, um, staff, 
um, audience, that they're all sharing the same space so that we're reminded it's that people that make this work. So if you go as an audience member and see a work and you go and stay at the bar or have a, a bite to eat after the show in our space, you're going to see every single person who was on that stage in that space with you. And it just reminds us that it's not a precious thing. It's not an elevated thing, but it's accessible in another kind of way to each of us. What's it done for the neighborhood? Well, I think it's, it's, it's been a great grounding for that part of, of the theater district. And, you know, that part of town is just developing at a, a major speed. And so I think uh, the building was initially called the gateway to the Hudson Yards. And, sure. Um, and it's sort of done that. It didn't always look that way. I mean, you think about, sorry for interrupting, think about where we are here on Lincoln Center. Right. Yeah, Lincoln Center and Paul. What was it about nineteen in the sixties, seventies? You right? Yeah, Ma major transition change in the sixties or happened yeah. in the sixties. You guys are part of an incredible transition there, right? Yeah, Second Street. Well, we opened this building in two thousand twelve, and we had developed a theater down at Eleventh and Forty Second Street, and was there for Further fifteen west. years. Yeah, we were there for fifteen years. So that was no man's land back then. And we ended up down the block in this whole new center. Uh, yeah, it's been amazing. Before I let you out of here, in 1991, when you founded it, was this the vision? You know, the vision, it started about uh, empowering the individual. And for us, that, that was really the writer. And to create context for that writer and to appreciate the full scope of a body of work and a life in the arts. And so it was founded on that core principle and to dig in in a real way, in a deep way, a meaningful way, with an individual and, uh, in our case, the writer. And so that has been consistent throughout, and the mission of the company has grown organically to what it is today, where we have this complex that is facilitating all those relationships to flourish. You love what you do, and uh, do. you're making a great impact on a lot of people. Jim Houghton is the founding artistic director of Signature Theater on 42nd Street between 10th and 11th. Uh, we thank you for doing what you are doing in the neighborhood and well yeah. beyond. Uh, Jim, thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks so much, broadcast. Steve, for having me. It's great meeting you. It was Thanks terrific. A lot. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Caldwell University, MagnaCare, TD Bank, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com, the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.